Hey there, there's a power cut and I am recording a mini little series talking about fatness and how it's called thin, how it's the new thin and how South Africa is trying to make me fat and how that's apparently okay because I'm body shaming and I'm fat shaming when I highlight that being fat is not healthy. It isn't. Any amount of fat around your heart, any amount of fat around your liver, any amount literally fat that is in excess around your vital organs is frankly proven medically to be unsafe. History running all the way back into however early the days of medicine identified that fat could be an issue in a person's life. They've been rolling around back into all of those centuries ago. But no, in the 21st century, this society that is calling good evil and evil good is saying that obese people don't have an incentive to lose weight. Overweight people don't have an incentive to lose weight. To a point, they are promulgating this like ridiculous issue so badly that they are actively hiring fat ballerinas. They are actively hiring fat dancers. They are active like people that indeed you can do the flip. I respect you. I can't do one. I am trying to get upper body strength so I can at least do a handstand. Never mind a flip. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I respect anyone that at all has toned themselves and has developed a technique and has prospered to do things that many of us can't do. Like I can't even do a basic cartwheel. I'm jealous. For people who can do cartwheels because I have an obsession with capoeira and it does a whole bunch of uh, wolves, otherwise known as cartwheels for the regular men on the street. And I can't do capoeira with any level of je ne sais quoi spunk swagger that I desire because I can't do a basic cartwheel. I can't do a handstand. So I respect people who have got upper body mass upper body strength that can do a handstand for longer than like a split second and people can also do a full cartwheel i literally envy children because they do it so easily so do not mistake me for disrespecting a, a person who has learned a technique in some kind of a craft because they've got fat on their body for being whatever you're worthless because you are fat i'll be being able to do a handstand you're literally much better than me but this is about health it is about Taking care of the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is our bodies. It is about the irresponsibility over mankind, over their bodies. Like, and it is like the, just the things that people are trying to say they're okay when they're not. You, you cannot have a fat ballerina because by mere virtue of that person being a ballerina, they gotta be agile and fluid and smooth. Like, they, there's just things that you can't do when you've got a little bit more fat on your body. Like, literally, as a ballerina, you can't even afford to be medium-sized. You gotta be skinny. It's that basic. Like, let's just not deny it. However, if you are a dancer, you don't have to be skinny. You can be, like, medium. You can be average-sized, but you cannot be fat and successfully dance. Because on that day, it's like you are carrying weights on your body as you work out. Because the fat on your body are those weights. And so what you observe, then, when you are watching a show with a whole bunch of chubby girls and chubby boys that are being paraded in front of stages at the Oscars, at the Grammys, at all different kinds of entertainment shows for the world. What you're seeing is the promulgation of acceptance. I think I'm hearing stuff outside. The promulgation of acceptance of an unhealthy culture that is leaving people to carry on in their insanity when they ought rather be counseled away from it. The United States, for instance, is the that is by far the greatest promulgator of such a trend as this, a culture as this, in the spirit of just accepting everything. The liberal agenda, the left agenda is quite ridiculous, frankly. However, the U.S. comes from a history and it is known across the world as being one of the most obese nations in the world. And it is indeed a problem, an epidemic, a condemnable issue in the land that needs to be corrected. Otherwise, its citizens are going to remain very, very unhealthy. And yet this country that has struggled with the history of obesity in comparison to all other countries in the world is putting Lizzo on the forefront of fitness. Fitness. Putting Lizzo on the forefront of fitness. I am not against Lizzo. I love her. Do you understand? She's got a beautiful voice. She's incredibly talented. And if she turned her life over to the Lord, she might make for a really great gospel artist. I love Lizzo. But she is not to be the face of any fitness campaign at all. Not even in the slightest. Do you understand? It is undermining people who are actually working like dogs to get fit, to inspire and encourage people to take care of these temples that ought to be temples for the Holy Spirit. And yet, they are pushing a whole bunch of chubby dances in the name of no body shaming. <clears throat> Everybody is welcome. Come and dance. But you can see the active exasperation of these dancers that are chubby, big. How it is that when they do a basic squat, they look like they are like three quarters off from the scarf or from the floor as opposed to just halfway there. The way that a skinnier dancer would do a proper like hard knock, low and wide squat. Fat dancers cannot do a low and wide squat because there is fat standing in the way of them bending their knees completely first and foremost and secondly, their bodies are so heavy in the same way that when you are lifting weights at the gym and you are on your like sixth or sixteenth lift, you are less 
smooth and agile with your movement on the 16th lift versus when you were starting out at the first one. Even if you do jump squats, for instance, that put weight on you by mere virtue of you landing, that gravity that uh, wreaks havoc in your life without weights, by the time you get to your eighth, you are not going all the way down. You are barely making it. You're literally just bending your legs at like a little acute angle. It's not that an, 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 sorry, an, an obtuse, not an acute angle. You are not doing a proper finished job because the weight on you is exasperating by the time you get to your eighth or your tenth or your sixteenth depending on your level of fitness so when you have got that much weight on you you are going to struggle to finish your set on a dance show stage you are going to struggle to finish what you are doing when you are doing it because you are literally like one who is on your 10th or your 13th or your 15th or your 18th jump squat and so so therefore you are less palatable to take in your stride upon how it is that you look like it does not look as smooth and as it looks fragmented. It looks fragmented because you are exhausted much quicker than uh, a, 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 who is this? Like the athlete next to you, the dancer next to you, that's a little bit thinner. They will never wear out as quickly as you do, even though you might have the same amount of muscle mass because you train the same amount of weights. And so you therefore build the same amount of muscle every single time you work out. Despite developing that, no matter how much you might do cardio to increase your stamina, to increase your, durab your dur I durability, that too, but what I wanted to say is a duration, your stamina, yeah, endurance, yes. No matter how much you might do a whole bunch of cardio to strengthen your endurance or get better at endurance, by mere virtue of you having a lot more fat on your body, you are still going to be less agile on the dance floor than a person with less fat on them. You lit yeah, so... To try and promulgate or pontificate the agenda by the fitness industry that fat people can still be fit is, goodness gracious, it's absurd. It's never been true. They can be fit, but they cannot be healthy while they're fat. Fitness, you, you can, even running, jogging, anything, there is a struggle there. I am not fat shaming. I'm just highlighting that in these last days, people are calling what is good evil and what is evil good. The Lord would never allow for a person to just sit and spread. There is a sin in the Bible called gluttony. Do you understand? Overeating is a total problem. Anything at all that is done in excess to the human body is a total problem. And if you continue to overeat, overindulge to a point where your body starts to get piles upon piles of fat on it, on that day you're sitting against God. You don't know when to stop. So if as a person as big as you are, refuse to work out and get thinner because Hollywood is promulgating that fat is the new fit and Lizzo is the face for Nike or Adidas or whatever, you are on that day saying your temple does not matter and you can ransack it as much as you want. You can be as gluttonous as you want. We are living in an era of mukbangs as well where there are these little kids rolling around all over the show eating way too much food on social media when there is a famine all over the show everywhere else in the world. Like, it's problematic to eat that much. Like, the ones in, 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 in Korea are the worst with like 10,000 eggs that they consume in one sitting and they've got these slender faces and these tiny little bodies. They are promulgating a culture of overeating in a world where overeating has always caused problems and we have figured that out through medicine and the such. So God was sitting here eating Marvel pudding in front of you guys. It's not an attempt to glamorize a mukbang. It is an attempt to help you understand that because of an increase in lawlessness and because of a global population that is just going awry, because of everything falling apart, people who under normal circumstances would make for good examples as to how to live because we are living epistles are now bad examples doing mukbangs in front of you because they've turned off power and I don't have any other options but to, I don't know, sit around and twiddle my fingers so I, I, I don't know, I comfort eat. I comfort eat. But I'm going to rock up on Monday next week, whenever I eventually go back to the gym. My turn amount of it. And I'm going to be slightly fatter than I was last time I left the gym floor. And I'm still going to get accepted as a fitness instructor or a trainer. People are still going to follow me. People are still going to like my content, despite me being obviously less fit than I was last time. And obviously fatter. Like my clothes, goodness gracious. I have been interrupted in my workouts because of persecution alongside this African apartheid crisis. So as a result, my muscles have gotten softer. And secondly, I have noticed that some of my clothes don't fit as well as they used to. Last week, I worked out wearing these pants that used to like literally glide right up my body. And now I had to like keep on like pulling them up. I did one squat and literally the center of my pants in the middle tore. I was like, I have had these pants for I don't know how long. And for the first time in how long, thanks to this African parka crisis, they tore because I wore them gankane. I forced them on my body, despite me being literally slightly overweight in comparison to what I'm used to. Yet, however, people will still embrace me despite that being an issue, simply because I'm not quite on my 500-pound life as an obese person needing a gastric bypass. Next part.